And now, from beyond our dimension, this is the Jeff Mara Podcast. Here's Jeff. My guest is Leon Ariel Malul, Raelian Chief Rabbi and Spokesperson of the Mosaic. Today, he is here to teach us about Raelism. Leon, thank you for joining me and welcome. Hello, Jeff. Thank you very much for accepting me in your interview. It's a pleasure. Well, we are excited to have you. And as I was saying before we started, it, it's almost like I manifested having you here because I saw something on Netflix. I just watched it for like a couple minutes and, and I never watched the whole thing, but it's amazing how I just kind of saw that and now you're here. We're here since the last, well, not myself, uh, uh, but Rael uh, started this movement over 50 years ago now. And uh, all started one day on December 13, 1973, mm -hmm. where he was driving to his office. And he felt the urge to stop somewhere in between, where it's called the uh, uh, center of France, it's close to Clermont-Ferrand. There are ancient volcanoes there. And then he, he used to go to that place when his family for camping during summertime. And it was on December 13. So he went all the way up to this volcano and down. And then he, he you know, it was chilly um, at that time of the year. So he said, what I'm doing here? I have work to do and all that. And what am I here for? All of a sudden, he saw something shining in the sky with a beam light on top and another one on the bottom. And uh, the beginning, he thought it was an helicopter. Then there was no noise or whatever. And he saw it coming down slowly. And as he was a journalist, he said, well, too bad I don't have a, a camera with me to take a picture because this would have been great. And uh, well, he started uh, freaking out is when he saw a ladder opening and two legs coming down. Then he said to himself, I don't going to move. Maybe they will think I am a tree or something and they will leave. <laughs> What happened then is that a man came out. He thought it was a child because the size of this man was a mirror 30, mirror 40 maximum. And he walked directly to him and with very shiny face, full of love, no weapon, nothing in his hand. Then he, uh, at that time, uh, Claude Vaurion, who was called Rael after that, he got more confident and this extraterrestrial approach to him and the French man who's Claude Vaurion asked him, uh, do you speak French? Because at that time, Claude Vaurion was only speaking French. Then the extraterrestrial replied, I speak all languages in the world. And he said, do you come here often? Claude Vaurion asked him, do you come here often? Then the extraterrestrial replied, I came here many times, and today I came to meet with you. Your name is Claude Vaurion, you're married, you have two children, you run a sport car magazine, and we have telepathically induced you to come here today because I have a message to handle you for the entire humanity. And he told him also about two or three weeks ago, we, told, we telepathically induced you as well to buy one of the Bibles that where the name Elohim wasn't changed by God because that was a mistranslation. Elohim is a plural of the word Eloha. He invited him into his craft and then he gave him the following message. He told him, we are the Elohim mentioned in the original Hebrew Bible. Elohim is the plural of the word Eloha which means in ancient Hebrew, those who come from the skies. We are the ones, over 25,000 years ago, we came to this planet and we started creating all kinds of lives, starting with planktons, uh, uh, flowers, all kinds of animals. And after 30, uh, 13,000 years, we decided to create humans to our image, our, after our likeness. And this is how the whole thing started. 
since the ages, we have sent all prophets from all religions. Among the most important ones, Moses, Jesus, Buddha, and Mohammed who were our messengers and our prophets. In order that people will understand, but unfortunately they didn't, but some scripts can testify today of our presence on earth and who we are, especially the original Hebrew Bible, which Elohim remains Elohim, and that still Jewish people still believing Elohim is God, but it's a plural name. Uh, since uh, when they came here 25,000 years ago, they start creating all life with genetic manipulations of DNA. There's oxyribonic lake acid, as you know. And uh, after they send all prophets from all religions, they decide after the Hiroshima bomb on August 6, 1945, they you know, they decided to send a last messenger because they say either you can progress with nuclear power or you can auto-destroy yourselves. And because we are a chain of creation of life through universe, they don't want us to auto-destroy ourselves. So they have decided to send the last messenger because now it's time of revelation, which is called in Greek, apocalypse, which doesn't mean resurrection, but if you see in the dictionary, apocalypse means revelation. Then they give him two aims to Rael. They change his name to Rael, first of all, which is the root of the word Israel. And they ask him to spread this message worldwide and to build them, <coughs> sorry, and to build them an embassy where they can come and meet with the peop with people on earth and with all our governments, because it's time we stop believing and start understanding. This is the main story of what happened on December 13, 1973. Then in 1975, on October 7, they come back again and they took him to their planet. But let's Continue with your questions, and then we will... Well, what planet are they from? We don't know the name of the planet. They're on the, on an, on the same galaxy, but on another solar system. And they're 25,000 years ahead of us in technology. So we cannot even imagine what technology they have, how they do things. They can, you know, they can create a human being out of a cell of someone, a copy, an identical copy of this human being. And they have reached a certain level of technology that today, you know, they live between 700 and 1,000 years. Now, when this body gets, when their body gets older after 700, between 700 and 1,000, they just take one cell, they remove one cell, they put it in the machine, they create exactly like cloning the same human being. Now, the same way we can buy a new computer and transfer everything we have on the memory of the old computer into the new one, they have the technology to download into the memory of this new body all the, all the knowledge, the, the, the life, the memories, everything this person had during his life. So this is the only way to reproduce the same human being and give him eternal life. His that goes through cloning. What about his consciousness? Can they transfer the consciousness from one body to it another? Be, it will be exactly, exactly the same human being with all his thoughts, everything he has in his memory, all his souvenir, his consciousness, everything. Now, you said earlier that they created humans and they created all the life on this earth, but dinosaurs have been here for millions of years. And I think you were saying like 30,000 years ago or something. Listen, Jeff, the Elohim, when they came to earth, the earth was already there. It was all covered with water and with the explosions, 
they made just one continent and removed the water. Now, it doesn't mean that on the on our planet there were not other creations of life, not necessarily by the Elohim, but other people who have created life and other civilization that came to Earth and created life. And this is maybe a possibility that we can find some things that you know were three hundred thousand years or, or uh, I don't know a, a couple of millions of, of years. But the planet Earth was always there. You are a rabbi, and they changed his name to Rael, which is part of the word Israel. Is this teaching, I'm not sure what to call it, religion or movement primarily based on Judaism? It's not primarily based on Judaism, but the basis of Judaism, all the, the first book of Rael, I don't know if you have read it, but on our website, rael.org, this book can be downloaded for free in over 80 languages. So anyone can read them and make their own, their own idea about them. And it explains all the Hebrew texts from the Bible demystified and understood today with our technology and our knowledge. People that could not explain at the time that they saw these extraterrestrials or they were in contact with them. I, am, I come from a religious, traditional family, Sephardic Jew, a religious family. And I always had questions, you know, we used to, to go and pray in synagogue and all that. And at my, ta at my time in Morocco, uh, the school where I was going and all that, we didn't uh, understood how to... We didn't, we didn't learn to, trans, to translate from Hebrew to, from another language to Hebrew and so and so. So we didn't learn uh, what every word was meaning. But we used to pray and go to synagogue and, and, write, and read Hebrew and all that without talking because we, don't, we didn't understood. Now, since I was a, a young child, since I was a child, I always had questions, but never got answers because they used to tell us, well, so this is the way we have been taught and this is the way we will continue because, you know, we it's our religion and it's what's written. You know, I grew up and continue my life as a Jew, uh, practicing and all that. And uh, I got married in a Jewish way. I had my son circumcised and so on, and so on, and so on. And uh, over 36 years ago, I read the book, which is called Intelligent Design. And this book changed my life because it answers all the questions I had since my childhood. And what I did, because I didn't understood Hebrew at that time, I, I read Hebrew, but I didn't understood word by word the meaning. So I took a, a Hebrew French dictionary. I took the messages that the Elohim gave to Rael on the book Intelligent Design. I took the original Hebrew Bible in Hebrew and start translating word by word and sentence by sentence. And I came to the conclusion that the message Israel received had confirmed exactly in the original Hebrew Bible. And since then, I started lecturing worldwide in Europe, in many places in Europe, in United States, in Canada, and in Israel, where I live for over 18 years. Is that book intelligent design from Rail or from the ETs given to Rail? Design. Absolutely. It's not a book that is a book that he wrote according to the messages the Elohim gave him exactly word by word. And this could be found on our website, rael.org, and could be downloadable for free. Were you a rabbi in Judaism before you decided no. to become a Raelian? No, I, uh, I was a Jewish scholar. I learned Hebrew. I, uh, but uh, being Raelian rabbi is like, Rael give me that 
title because of my knowledge of Hebrew. And uh, I can tell you with all the lectures I give, many rabbis, they boycott our <laughs> my lectures because they cannot prove the opposite of what I bring because I bring texts from the original Hebrew Bible, the Tanakh, the Zohar, the Kabbalah, and many other scripts, many other Hebrew books that confirm exactly the Elohim are one extraterrestrial civilization, and they are many and not one single God. And they don't accept that. So they, because they cannot prove the opposite, they try to boycott our lectures and even uh, they, they come in front of any hall to avoid that Jewish people will enter the hall and listen to what I am saying. I, I always told him, listen, you are a rabbi from from Jewish religion, why don't you come and confront me and try to make me, make me feel ridiculous in front of everyone? If you have more knowledge than myself and you can prove the opposite, please come in. The problem is that they cannot prove the opposite because this original Hebrew text confirm word by word that the message Israel received from the Elohim is confirmed by these scripts. When you were living in Israel, how did the people treat you there? All depends where. I was well treated, you know. Uh, people understood because in Israel, people speak Hebrew. And the fact that they speak Hebrew, they understand better than those living in the United States or in Canada or in Europe that are Jews, but not necessarily speak Hebrew. Not all Jews speak Hebrew, and don't I, and they don't necessarily understand. I believe the book of Ezekiel is in the original Hebrew Bible, and if so, did you read about what they're talking about? You know, the part about the wheel in the wheel and and all that stuff. That's, Absolutely, that's, can it's you, Ezekiel one. Mm -hmm. Can you one, can you explain what that means? Because it no. sounds like a spaceship to me. Exactly, exactly. Then in Ezekiel one to one twenty eight is the whole explanation of a spaceship landing on planet Earth. And this is a very, very funny because this is a prayer of the first day of Shavuot, which is a Hebrew celebration when the Elohim gave them the Ten Commandments. On that same day, there is this prayer that they uh, pray, of course, in synagogues. On that day, this is the prayer is Ezekiel 1 to 128, which describes without any doubt the landing of a spaceship. And when you see this, this it's very, very funny because they say they they describe this this UFO, they describe this spaceship. And they say, we see faces of animals and we see uh, his their feet and under their feet, there is like the floor, uh, it's like blue. And, and uh, Rael made the same description when he went into the craft of this extraterrestrial, when he was invited, the floor, he described the floor like it was the same color, like turquoise, like it's explained in Ezekiel from 1 to 128. So it's, you know, people can understand if they're open-minded and they can see further on their nose. Some people, they prefer not to understand. Some people prefer not to know because they're afraid of the truth. But the truth is out there. And the more we are advancing in times with a lot of signs in the skies today, a lot of spaceships around everywhere, and also with crop circles, one day we will not be able to avoid, I mean, to, to see this extraterrestrial coming because they're going to show themselves more and more and more. They want us to understand because we are their creation, we are their children, and they don't want us to destroy ourselves. 
And this is the main reason why they're showing up. And according to the messages they gave to rail, they want us to build an embassy to welcome them because they're not invaders. They want us to be invited as guests. And the, recognized as our fathers from space. When do you think the Elohim are coming back? Well, they told Rael between 2025 and 2035. Interesting. Hoping we will not blow up ourselves before because with all these crazy leaders around, just manufacturing bombs in a planet that we have nowhere to go, it's absolutely crazy because at the time of the Hiroshima bomb, when the Americans bombarded Hiroshima, they killed over 300,000 people between Hiroshima and Nagasaki on August 6, 1945. Now, with the millions of bombs that every country has, we can blow up our planet maybe 100,000 times. So what's the use of doing bombs to kill people? People that... You know, when they're starving, we send them uh, a full bag with wheat and 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 food and all that. And after that, we our governments create conflicts to kill each other and sell their weapons because you know it's just matter of business. That's all. They don't care about people. What about the burning bush story in the Hebrew Bible? Very interesting. The Hebrew bush Moses saw. This is another primitive way, I'm sure you have seen um, a, an electric fireplace. Yes. Well, what does give you the impression that is fire in it, but there is no fire? True. Well, if you have a projector, red projector, moving like flames on a bush, you will believe that it's burning, but it doesn't burn. So it's exactly what the Elohim did to Moses. It was a projector of their spaceship or whatever on a, on a bush to make him, you know, to make him not afraid, but to make him believe or, or to make him understand that, you know, we are gods because at that time, at that time, they, they want people to believe and respect them as, you know, we are gods, we are the creators. And, and after that, they spoke to them. And after that, they took them to their planet. Like they took Rael to their planet on October 7, 1975. They also took Moses when they say, well, he was 40 days on the Mount Sinai and so and so and so and so. He was not there for 40 days and 40 nights. He was with them on their planet. They took him to their planet. Like they took Jesus to their planet because Jesus is the son of the most important of all the Elohim, which is called Yahweh and a woman of the earth. And probably his mother was, was inseminated artificially. And that's the main reason she was virgin. Today we are able to understand and we can stop believing. And the same way, like Muhammad, who was another one of the prophets, was taken with El Borak, which in Hebrew, El Borak, which Mavrik, something that shine. Mavrik, with something shining. And even in, in, in United States, in English, when you say this person is Mavrik, someone that is bright, right? So... All these prophets were taken to their planets and, you know, they were thought a little bit and, and they tried to explain them and they understood few things and other day they don't understood. And, uh, you know, they come back and give their messages. And most of the prophets that have been sent, besides Jesus and, Moh and, Mus and, uh, and uh, Moses and Mohammed and many others, they were sent over 40 prophets to Israel. Unfortunately, they were always bringing the same messages from the Elohim, but they were all jailed or killed, all the prophets, because they were disturbing the establishment. They were bringing the same message Riley is bringing, 
but people were not able to understand. And today we are able to understand. For those who want to understand, because we're still living on a primitive planet that some people still may be believing that we are alone in the universe. And the universe is infinite. In the Hebrew, the universe is end sof End sof which means no end. And if there is no end, there is no beginning. There was always life everywhere in the universe. And this is what's interesting. It's like, you know, life was always there in different forms. And how we explain this symbol, which is a symbol of infinity, and is a symbol, a symbol of the Elohim, which is the Star of David to represent the two triangles representing the infinity large and infinity small, and the swastika in the middle, which is the infinity in time, because they have no time. And the infinite, there is no time. Now, let me explain a little bit what how we can perceive infinity. We are living on planet Earth. This planet Earth is on a solar system. This solar system is in a galaxy. This galaxy is in the universe. And this universe is an atom of a molecule of one cell of something alive that even the Elohim not, don't know what it is. Could be a cat, could be a worm, could be, uh, I don't know, could be a human being, we don't know. It's like one atom of one of our cells. It's an infinite universe with galaxies, solar systems, planets, and life of some on the planet. And maybe for us, the time to breathe is maybe for them because they're so infinitely small, 100 years. But for us, it's just the time to breathe. It's like for us. 100 years for us, maybe for this atom of one cell of this giant or humongous human being or a cat or a worm or whatever it is, for them, maybe it's, uh, it's 100 years, it's one second for us. We don't know. Very complicated because infinity, you cannot describe it and you cannot explain it. You have to feel it through, the, through meditation. Did Rail ever describe what their planet looked like? Well, when they took him into their planet on October 7, 1975, he described a beautiful planet, which is the one that called the Elohim have two planets. One where all the Elohim live, and another planet they have created to compensate those who have done good, either for humanity or people among themselves, who were very involved, and they want to give them eternal life through cloning, as I explained, by removing one cell and creating the same human being and downloading their memory into the new body like we download the memory of our old computer into the new one. Now, he described this beautiful planet, and he met with all the prophets that have been recreated after the death in this planet of the Eternals. And why is it called that? We why do we call it the Garden of Eden? In Hebrew, is Gan Eden. Gan means garden, garden, and Eden means DNA. This is the Garden of DNA. Interesting. I didn't know that. The thing that I have discovered in this message from the Elohim that then I started even more interested into Judaism and Hebrew scripts. And then I found like, you know, over hundred or more citations and I still discovering every day, more cita citations in the original Hebrew Bible and in other Hebrew scripts that confirm exactly without any doubt, the Elohim are extraterrestrials and it confirms the message they gave to Ray. What about Moses himself? Is he part ET? He was, his father was an extraterrestrial. And he with uh, an Egyptian uh, princess. All right. This this is the reason why he was in Pharaoh's uh, palace and living there. He was 
did the Dalek prints. But at that time, it was not, he was not recognized as a Jew. It was, you know, then the story made his way, you know, and uh, according to what we know, maybe it was a little bit different. We don't know. In the beginning, I mentioned that I saw just very little on Netflix. And I'm assuming Netflix may have not done a good job telling the world about what you guys do. Is there anything that you would like to clear up that you feel is untrue that was shown about realism? Of course, it was a made up show to made like everything Netflix does. It just, you know, uh, science fiction and try to attract people with, you know, they, they spoke about the messages, but they gave us like many newspaper in French, in France, uh, a very bad reputation, which is all false. What Netflix means is that, you know, we have free sex, which, which is absolutely wrong. And absolutely, we are against that. And even Rael mentioned and made a website to condemn all pedophiles and all pedophilian priests worldwide. Since Rael did that, they started accusing us of being pedophiles and even before. This is why Rael made this website and condemned all the thousands and many hundreds of thousands of Billion priests worldwide. But the problem of the church is that Rael, he is the one that is announced as the Messiah. And he is the one that should build this third temple, which is the embassy the Elohim request, where they will come. And the minute they will come, it, the, the, the mystery of God will be over. Even I will go even further than that. Why all governments? in all governments worldwide are forbidding today cloning. There is a reason for that, because if a human being today, a doctor, someone in laboratory, a chemistry, create a human being, if one man or one woman create a human being, there is no more place for God. Because if one man can create another woman, another human, where the hell is God? So the problem the governments have is that it will destroy all religions. And the, and the Catholic Church knows that. And maybe you have read that this is the actual pop, is the 112th pop, which is the last one of all the pops. Then they knew Rael will be the one that will, by this message that Elohim gave him, he is the one that will destroy all religions, starting with the Catholic Church. Because if there is no more pop, it means the Vatican will collapse. And it's written in many texts that, you know, in Hebrew texts, that Rome will be destroyed. When we talk about Rome, it's not the entire city, it's Rome, the Vatican because it's everything they have done is false. Jesus didn't come to change Judaism into Christianism. Jesus came and he said, I'm not here to change even one Yota from the Bible, which means he came here to explain the same message Rael is giving today through humanity. And they prefer to kill him than have him, you know, talking about this message and disturbing the establishment. Is Jesus coming back? He will, the, when the Elohim will come back, they will come back with all the prophets, with Jesus, with Moses, with Buddha, with Muhammad, and probably others. But for that, you know, one of our governments needs to accept, to, uh, to acknowledge extraterritoriality before they will arrive. They, the Elohim requested to have extraterritoriality like any embassy from every, any country 
have when, you know, they build their embassies somewhere. For example, if you have the Russian embassy not, that is in Washington, not the American uh, government or the army or whoever cannot go into the uh, Russian embassy because that's their territory. It's like if it was their country. And this is the same for every embassy worldwide. And this is why the Elohim wants to be recognized and that to build this embassy to be like protected. They don't want, because you know what's happening, every time they see a UFO or a spaceship, they try to shoot them. I mean, they have technology 25,000 years ahead of us. They, they can fly uh, much faster than the speed of light. No F-16 can come after them. I mean, it's a joke. It's, it's, uh, the weapons that we have today, it's like uh, fireworks for them. Where are they going to build this embassy? Well, we have planned to build it in Israel, and we have many requests to the Israel government, and they didn't accept our requests. And uh, the only reason why the state of Israel was created and the only reason why the state of the Elohim had given this land and they accepted since 1948 that all the Jews will have a land where they can build is to recognize the Elohim last messenger, which is Israel, the Messiah, and to help him build this embassy, which is the third temple the Jewish people want to build but they don't want to accept this extraterritoriality because of the religious power. The religious people, they want to continue on the same scripts like Moses wrote, according to Moses' time, according to many rabbis, which we have made interpretations of texts because they couldn't understand either. But today, we are able to understand. If it, and if the state of Israel will not accept to give this land to build this third temple, they have no reason to exist. Israel will be destroyed and it will be a new diaspora like it happened many times. This is what we need to, to understand and be more aware of it because the survival of Israel is on the, in their hands. When I moved to Israel, it was to build the rally and movement there. And I lived there for 18 years and I was well known, giving lectures all over, hundreds of lectures I gave there. And, you know, in Jerusalem, it was a little bit uh, hard. And, you know, we did one in, in Beersheba uh, and in the north of Israel, in, uh, in Galilee. Um, in the north of Israel, where we prepare the lectures, the rabbis went out to remove the flyers that we were giving to people. And they went to the hotel and they told the manager of the hotel, if we, if you allow them, these people to come and give a lecture and talk about what they're talking, we will remove you, the, we will remove the certificate of kosher which means you're dead. Your hotel will not work because people that come to hotels needs to be kosher. The food needs to be kosher. So we'll remove your certificate. So it's your choice. You accept them, you're dead. As simple as that. So imagine the fear they put into people's head not to accept this message. It's amazing. For the people who have in their scripts, in their books, in the Torah, that I confirm without any doubt the Elohim are an extraterrestrial civilization, they're afraid of the truth. Ryle himself is living in Japan these days. Mm -hmm. What is he doing there? He's uh, doing, he's doing uh, lectures. He's still uh, active. He's the, 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 our, our uh, spiritual leader. And he decided to move to Japan because, you know, he was blamed in Europe for, for, for uh, you know, uh, stupid things, not to never condemn, like 
you know, in Netflix, they say, Rael was never condemned for all the blames that they, they put on us and, you know, defamation in France, even in Canada, when he was living in Canada because he left France, he was sick and tired of France because of these journalists that are just telling lies and distorting things and, and, and mentioning things that are not true and even television programs and all that. So he decided to move in, to Canada. And after a few years in Canada, he started all over again because, you know, he, the, the, the media, they don't want that religions will be destroyed. And Rael, with his message, destroyed the, the belief in God. Then he decided to go to Japan. Well, he, there is no God in Japan, in the, in the, in the Asian culture. It's mostly Buddhism, and Buddhism is very close to realism, which means there is no God, so people don't attack him because of that. He does not, he's not disturbing Buddhism. We, the Raelian message is the demystification of Buddhism. This is why he decided to live there and live quietly there and, you know, he lead us from there and we, we are everywhere in the world, in all, almost all over the world, in many, many countries. We are a large number today. He started alone 50 years ago and, you know, this message have enlightened my life. And I really wish the people that will download the books on our website, rael.org, will read it. For some will enlighten their lives, for some others, maybe it's that banana. <laughs> so it's just, you know. But <laughs> okay, people today are able to understand, and that's what's important. Open mind and understand. No matter what your religion you are, just understand, don't believe if you don't want to. Uh, our way, our way is not to convince people or to make them believe. They read and they understand and they decide to join or not, as simple as that. So besides that we come from ETs, what else does Rail teach? He teaches us happiness. It teaches us a way of life. It teaches us not to have any, uh, not to feel bad about our body, not to feel bad with other people. It teaches us love. It teaches us fraternity. It teaches us peace. And this is the teaching of Raelian because it's the teaching of the Elohim to love each other like it's written in the Bible. Love your neighbor like your own, and you shall not kill. Because according to his messages, he told, he always tell us, if I give you, if I request from you, or I give you an order that to kill someone or to do something against your consciousness, and even if the Elohim asks you, don't do it. Don't do it. Do according to your consciousness, and your consciousness must be supported by peace, love, and fraternity. Is that it? Or does he have like, well, for example, in the Torah or the Jewish Bible, there's lots of laws and rules. Does he have any other laws or rules? No, we don't. We meditate, which is to be in harmony with ourselves and with other people, to be in harmony with the universe. We, according to Elohim recommendation, we fast once a week, just water to keep our body clean, to clean our body during 24 hours and to be harmonious and laugh and be happy. And uh, that's all. We don't have any religion, any strength. Of course, we don't smoke. We don't get drunk. We can drink a glass of wine, whatever. But I mean, we don't get drunk and we don't take drugs and we don't smoke because this is, for our body is not good. As simple as that. 
is like uh, Jewish people. They don't eat meat with milk because it's not because of uh, don't mix the 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 milk of the mother with the with the with the calf or, or whatever you know that uh, because the word uh meat and 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 uh in hebrew milk it means also fat it, it was not milk it was a fat of the the of the of the mother not to mix it with the with, uh the fat of the calf not to mix it with the with the um, milk of the mother that was the main reason but it's not good because it, the enzymes doesn't go together into your body doesn't match together. It's interesting. I didn't know that. What about? Yeah. I guess you're not supposed to eat cheese with meat as well. Uh, for according to Jewish religion, no. Uh, for healthy reasons, it's not recommended. But we can eat whatever we want. How many people do you think worldwide practice realism? Today we are uh, over three hundred thousand people mm. worldwide, and uh, over. Uh, I think a couple of millions that are interested and are into our website already and downloaded the books and read them. But I mean, they're not Raelians, but they have, they have, they took knowledge of the messages. They downloaded the books and they, they, they read them. And that's what's important to be informed because we're not here, as I mentioned, we're not here to convince people. We are here to inform them. They do whatever they want after, according to their, their understanding. Was Rael himself raised Jewish? No, Rael was not raised Jewish and Rael was not raised in any religion. And it's explained in the book, the reason why they, they choose him. And when this extraterrestrial told him, we have been following you since a long time and even before you were born. According to the message of this extraterrestrial, Rael, same as Jesus, same as Mohammed, same as Buddha, and same as, uh, as uh, Moses, he is also the son of an extraterrestrial and a woman of the earth. It seems like the last prophet was Mohammed, and then the Elohim have disappeared for about 1,500 years. Is that correct? And if so, why did they come back? No, they want to come back because they, they saw the, the danger that we can auto destroy ourselves and we are part of their garden. We are their children. They don't want us to auto destroy ourselves. And this is why they want to make us understand. And, and, and I call all the prophets, if you take Moses, uh, if you take uh, Jesus, they say, I will pray my father and he will send you the paraclete. The paraclete is Israel. And, and, and even Mohammed, even if they claim he is the last prophet, there were other prophets after him. And, you know, it, it's not a matter of being a prophet. He prophesies a few things, and other prophets come after that. And these prophets, have mentioned, even Mohammed have mentioned, uh, uh, will send you the paraclete. I mean, uh, they call it in Arabic, periclito. So they were, they were announcing already someone that will come after them. Why do we call Rael a prophet? Because a messenger is a prophet. Now, Rael doesn't come, didn't come here to tell us what's going to happen. He's telling us what it was and what it will be also because yeah, Rael have told us things about cloning, about DNA, about uh, uh, intelligent design, about uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Over 50 years, uh, since the last 50 years, he's, telling, he's talking about that. In all the seminars, I remember he was telling that. Have you personally ever seen a UFO? No, no, no. When I was in Israel, at one time I was in my balcony and I saw two big lights, like two beams, one going up, you know, 
further, another one going back. And I knew it wasn't uh, the sun and it was not uh, uh, an airplane, but I cannot say I saw a UFO because for me, seeing a UFO is to see the shape, to see from close, you know, but I have never, I have never. Does realism talk about reincarnation? And if not, does it talk no, about no what, reincarnation? No, no reincarnation. reincarnation. Then what we happens talk? after we die? Oh, very interesting question. If we have made good for humanity, and this is what we're here for, to love and care and share with each other and do good to help humanity blossom and grow, we have the chances. They have, they have a computer because every genetic code, every vibration of our genetic code on the planet that the Elohim have created life is in their computer. After our death, the computer makes the, the balance of what good actions you have done and what are the bad actions. Then it's a matter of being recreated or not. If we are recreated, we will be lucky to be among them to live eternally in the planet of the Eternals, which is the Garden of Eden. If we're not, we will not, we will not know, we will disappear, and we will be like infinity, because before we were born, we are infinity. During our lives, we are part of this infinity, and after our death, we will be infinity. So we return to infinity. And this is why we come from Earth and we'll return to Earth. Knowing this is better, we do good than bad. Well, if people want to find out more about Raelism, should they go to rail.org? Absolutely. They can enter our website, rael.org. They have all the, our events. They have our, all our seminars, Happiness Academy, all the meetings that are worldwide in each continent. And also what's most important is they can download the, the books in the languages of their choice, and I think they're translated in over 80 languages already, they download them for free and they can read them and make up their own mind. If people have questions, is there somebody on that website or a place on the website that they could uh, questions? No, not yet. We're planning to do it, but they can contact. There is a contact of in, in the, the each country. There are the contacts and the, the numbers and the PO box whatever, and the, and the website, and also the email address of every continent or every country even, where they can contact and have all the answers they want. Right. But if they want to contact me, I'll be more than happy to answer. It's my, my email address is l.mel at rael.rg. I like you have it. Like I, I email you. You know, a couple of times we have emailed together. That's right. my email address in case people want to contact me. Is there some sort of hierarchy within the religion? And I'm not even sure if I should be calling it a religion. What should I be calling it? Well, we are the Raleigh movement, and okay. religions come from the world religari, which means to be connected. We try to do uh, telepathic contact with the Elohim every day. Especially, they requested to Rael that we try a telepathic contact with them to thank them and think about them once a week on Sunday at 11 a.m. on in each country, in different countries. Now, uh, according to hierarchy, okay, we are there are guides in the Raelian movement, which is. These are people who can transmit cellular plant transmission. I don't know if you heard about it. Mm -mm. Okay. Uh, people who have read the book and recognize Israel and recognize the Elohim, the message of the Elohim, they, during, there are four dates where we have celebrations. On December 13, which is the first time they met with Israel, 
On October 7, which is the second time they met with Israel, on August 6, which is the anniversary of the Hiroshima bomb, hoping that it will not happen again, and on the first Sunday of April, which is the day they created the first human being. During these four dates, at three between 3 and 4 p.m., in every country, the Elohim have kind of UFO or spaceship or computer somewhere, and uh, uh, a guy that have been authorized wet their hands in water, in water, they put one hand here in the forehead and another one in the back, and they can transmit the vibration of the person that is recognizing the Elohim to the planet of the Elohim, to the computer that is around planet Earth. This is what we call the Raelian baptism, which is the transmission of the cellular code, the vibration of every human being, because the Elohim have already in their computer the, the genetic code of each individual that is born on this planet. And they know who recognize them when you when you read the books and you 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 recognize them, then you do our cellular your cellular plant transmission. Now, in the Raelian structure are the, the the what we can call bishops or or rabbis or Raelian uh, grand rabbis. These are the ones that are after Rael. Then you have the regular guides which are what we call level four. Rael is a level six. Then you have the level fives, which are uh, same like bishops. Then you have other guys that are level four. Then you have level threes, level twos, level one. And each one is, no one is considered uh, bigger or powerful over others. We have levels of responsibility, but everybody is equal. Where are you within that hierarchy? Level five. Well, do you have anything else that you're working on that you want people to know about? Yeah, well, we Rael ask us because in this bad situation with war everywhere, Rael ask us to meditate one minute for peace every hour. And I would like before we leave that we can close our eyes. Before we do the meditation, if you're driving or operating, Heavy machinery, stop the video and go back to the video later because we don't want you to be in danger. Think of the humanity. Think of everyone that is suffering. People that have bombs over their heads. People that are in hospitals, in jails, and everywhere. All humanity, all animals, all plants, all flowers. Let's send them love and peace in this specific moment. And if we can do it just once a day, it will be good. But if we can do it every hour, it will be even better. And we gather the second Saturday of every two months, we gather to have uh, our planetary meditation for peace. And I will send you the link where we can connect and people are most welcome to join us. I will send it to you by email, our website, our Zoom link where we can gather to meditate for peace, planetary meditation for peace, the second Saturday of every two months. Leon, thank you for the meditation and thank you for coming joining us and sharing about realism today. Thank you, Jeff, for inviting me to your show. And I am available anytime if you have other people that wants to join us in the show. And if you need more explanations, please do not hesitate to contact me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks for watching the Jeff Mara podcast. 
I really appreciate you. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. And if you do, there are loyalty badges and other perks depending on your level of membership. All you need to do is click the join button underneath the video to find out more. Thank you for your support.